Hello, everybody. Today we're going to look at four. Four things you can do to ensure that you have optimal health. Optimal health physically, mentally, and spiritually. These four things, if you do these, if you practice these four things that I'm going to go into, it will help ensure that your primary health and your secondary health is at its highest form or uh, at its peak. So, what are, what are these four things you can do to ensure that you have optimal health? We're going to name them, and then we're going to look at them a little more in depth. Number one, healthy food and supplements. Number two, fitness and exercise. Number three, deep sleep and meditation. And last but not least, positive mind and relaxation. So, before I get further to this video, my name is Hassan Shabazz. I am a certified health and wellness coach, as well as a certified personal, personal trainer. I'm also a certified life coach and wellness coach. Like this, we are, uh, we encourage you to like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't su su subscribed, share this video with loved ones or friends. Come back to the channel often. We, we uh, hit the notification button so you won't miss anything. We will be dropping plenty of information concerning how you can improve your health, how you can maintain your health. We're living in times that are very stressful. So maintaining your stress levels, understanding what stress is and what stress does to your body, all those important. And these four things that I'm going to go into will also help you manage stress. And they will help you to, um, if not be totally stress free, they will definitely help you to um, they will definitely help your stress levels to go down. So number one, healthy food and supplements. The other thing that's been around for a long time, was made famous uh, in the 1960s, eat to live, don't live to eat. And there's a slogan now that many health experts use called clean eating, eat clean. And in order to eat clean, you have to know what's, what's clean food, and what's not clean. When we say eat clean, we mean to eat healthy. Eat foods that benefit the body. At every meal, you should have three main nutrients. Every meal should contain, if you eat whether it's for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. It should, it should contain three main nutrients. These nutrients are called micronutrients because you need those nutrients in large quantities. Those three micronutrients are carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. And when you're eating healthy or you're eating clean, you have to know that every one of those three micronutrients have a, does a good way to get that out of the good source and there's a bad source. So you want to be conscious of the clean source. So eating clean means to eat foods that are clean. Eat the best 
possible version of something. So we want to eat clean. And we also want to eat to live. So our diet has to be a diet that will further our health. Not a diet that will tear down our health. So healthy foods and supplements. Make sure that you have carb carbs, proteins, and fats at every meal. Now, what and what in what quantity should you have those three micronutrients? Well, it's been suggested by the USDA that you have 20 to 35 percent fats in your diet. 10 to 35 percent proteins and about 75 percent carbohydrates so you need more carbs than you need fats and proteins because carbs is what gives us that's our fuel that's what gives us energy so let's look at it we've talked about carbohydrates and macronutrients on many uh, videos so for some of you who have followed the channel this will be a, a refresher now as we said, carbs are used as fuel and energy. The best sources for carbs are fruits and vegetables. They also, carbs can also be found in starchy foods also. As we have stated, there are good carbs and there are bad carbs. They're like there are good fats, bad fats, good protein, bad protein. Not all carbs are the same. Simple carbs, which is the carbs you want to avoid, and then the complex carbs. You want to try to get com complex carbs. And in getting complex carbs, you get the most fuel for, for, fuel, for food tax. So when you're dealing with carbs, try to avoid simple carbs. Try to get complex carbs. One example of a simple carb is white sugar. You want to try to avoid white sugar. White sugar is a simple carb, so you want to avoid that. Now, let's go a little further. That's only one example. There are many, many examples of simple carbs, but try to avoid simple carbs and com uh, uh, eat complex carbs. Whole, whole wheat foods, whole foods. The second thing that you need to have to have healthy food when you're eating a healthy diet, to make sure you have protein. It's impossible to have a, a diet that is balanced if you don't have protein. So you have to have, you have, to have protein. And the best source of protein is poultry, meat, fish, and cheese. Also milk. For those who don't want to drink milk, make sure that you eat poultry. Make sure you get enough meat, enough fish, and enough um, cheese if you eat cheese. If you don't eat cheese, make sure you get enough fish, enough meat, and enough poultry. You can also get protein from, from vegetables also. Many vegetables contain proteins. Now, a side note, one of the building, building blocks of protein is amino acids, and when you eat your food is broken down into amino acids. And as I said, amino acids are the building blocks of protein. So protein, very important. But don't become a zest and be like some bodybuilders or fitness people who only are concerned about how much protein they have. And they just, you get, they, um, they overdo their protein intake. Like I said, your recommended amount of protein, no more than 35% of 
of your diet. So your whole your, your diet should only be about 10 between 10 to 35 percent protein. So just to sit down and eat a lot of meat and you have no vegetables, um, you have no uh, carbohydrates, but just have meat, you don't have no starch in your diet, that's an unbalanced diet. So you need carbs, you need proteins, and you need fat. Now let's go further and look at going back to the amino acids. As we said that when you eat food, it's broken down into amino acids, and amino acids are the building blocks of protein. And then amino acids are also two types. There are two types of carbohydrates. There are complex carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates. There are two types of protein. There are, I mean, two sources you can get. There are, there are good protein. There are good protein. I mean, you get the protein from good sources. And there's bad protein. Protein that you get from not so good sources. Good sources for protein is our organic sources. I mean, uh, meaning organic fruits and vegetables. All fruits and vegetables that have been uh, planted that have been free of pesticides. And the best way to ensure that, protein, that your fruits and vegetables are free of pesticides is to eat fruits and vegetables that have been labeled organic. And you can find some that are labeled pesticide free. But you want to avoid pesticides. And if you happen to get fruits and vegetables and they're not organic, make sure you clean them properly. So, organic fruits, organic vegetables, grass-fed cow, Gra uh, chicken that is that are free-range, free-range chickens, chickens that are not eating uh, grain. Chicken that have that don't have antibiotics. Of just so many examples of good sources of protein. Now, going back to the amino acids. Amino acids it says that it, there are two types: essential amino acids and non-essentials. The, the amino acid, uh, there are the amino acids that we must have. And then there are the ones that we can do without. Essential means that you can get those from your diet because they're essential. So it, it's easy for you to get those. Just make sure that your diet is right. Make sure you eat the right amount of food, you will get your essential amino acids. If you eat protein, proper protein, you eat your carbohydrate, you eat your carbs. You're getting your complex carbs, your fats, you're getting your fat from good sources, you will get the essential of amino acids. But the non essential amino acids, you have to take supplements. Now, let's move to uh, the third thing that we say you have to have to have a healthy diet. Fats. You need a proper amount of fats, and we said that they, the USDA says that you should have 20 to 35 percent fats in your diet. And fats are known are uh, needed for growth, development, and energy. So, if you don't have fats in your diet, you don't have proper fats, then your growth is going to be stunted. You won't have energy. Now, a lot of people are not energetic because their diet is off. Your diet determines how much energy you have. Your diet also can determine your mental health, how you feel. All that goes together. So we need fast growth, 
development and energy. Fats can be obtained from meat. Try to make sure that your meat is organic. Grass fed. Whether it's cattle, whether it's lambs, make sure they're grass fed aboard. Meat that is not grass fed or meat that is not hormone free. Make sure your poultry is organic. Nuts. Make sure your milk has been processed, filtered, and is free of hormones. The cows who that milk came from were not cows that were injected with hormones. You also can get the, your fat from fish and from grains. Okay. Like I said, there are good fats and there are bad fats. But with fats, there are three types. The first type is the fat that you want, which is a good fat. The saturated, unsaturated, unsaturated fats are, are, are the fats that are okay. The bad fats are trans fats. You should avoid those at all costs. You should run away from trans fats. You, if you pick up a packet of food in the supermarket, or you pick up a bag of um, chips or a bag of um, Take a, a, some cookies or something that has, and it has uh, trans fat on it, you should immediately put that down. You should avoid trans fats at all costs. So, three types of fats, two are uh, okay, one is bad. Three types of fats, saturated fats, unsaturated. And the third one, trans fats. They said that you should avoid the trans fats at all costs. So those are the three micronutrients that you have to have in order to have a healthy diet. Carbohydrates, preferably complex carbs. Protein, make sure your protein comes from good sources. And you don't want to diet, diet that lean, leaning too much on protein. And then fats. And you remember want, you want to avoid trans fats. No trans fats. But you, want, you, need, you, you need good fats. Also, when looking at healthy food and supplements, you look, at, look at supplements. Some there are some things that you're going to have to. You want, you're not. There are some. Um, there, there are certain nutrients that you're going to need to get from vitamins. So don't be afraid to take supplements. You should take supplements. So there are a lot, a lot, of, a lot of uh, nutrients. Like I said, we don't get in our food. So you need to take supplements to balance everything out. So don't be afraid to take supplements. Also, when you're dealing with healthy food, healthy food and supplements, water. Make sure you get your proper intake of H2O. I said eight to ten glasses daily. Sick, at least a minimum of 64 ounces of water every day. Take water with you. If you're going to work, make sure you take some water with you if you know you're not going to really have access to water. So make sure that your water intake, like I said, 8 to 10 gallons of water daily. Very important that you drink your water. So let's make sure that we're getting the proper micronutrients at every meal. With that, make sure we have the carbohydrates, the um, complex carbs, 
make sure that we have proteins from good sources and make sure that uh, we, that we have the right fats that we that, that we got the, the right fats so you've got to have the fats starchy foods make sure we have that now let's move to another, the second thing that you need for optimal health and that is fitness and exercise there was, there was a poster one time that said that well, in fact, I have that poster on on on, on, on one, one of my blogs. It says, "There's no way that that it said that you cannot outwork a bad diet." In so many words, meaning that no matter how much you work out, if your diet is bad, it's going to take you're not going to get the optimum effect. So that's why we say that your first thing is to have a healthy diet. Your diet is your diet and supplements that first. And then once that's right, then make sure that your fitness and exercise program is right. So, fitness, you said that every is said by the um, FDA, I believe, if I'm, if I'm quoting the right agency, but it's but it is known by, by fitness enthusiasts and doctors that the human body needs at least 60 minutes of continuous movement daily. 60 minutes of continuous movement. So you need to move your body continuously 60 minutes daily. And the best way to do that is to have a designated exercise program where you work out 60 minutes daily, continuously. You need to be concerned about your cardiovascular health. So you need to worry about, you need to be concerned about doing aerobics. You need to be concerned about running or running on a treadmill if you, if you don't run, uh, if you don't jog. So you need to worry about your cardiovascular health. And the best way to improve your cardio, cardiovascular health is to have some type of running or, some, or working on a treadmill. Jumping jacks is another exercise that will help your cardiovascular. It will, it will help your heart because it helps it help to help your um, build up your your uh, lungs. So you got to be not only concerned about strength, but also about flexibility. Make sure that before you exercise that you stretch the, the right amount of time. You, so stretching is very important. That's the first thing you'd be concerned about. Stretching. Make sure that you stretch properly. Make sure that when you exercise that you work all parts of your body. Make sure you not just deal with your legs. Some people just like go deal with your legs. But also deal with your upper body. Deal with, um, like I said, deal with your car, uh, Make sure you, you want to work next, do those things that will improve your cardiovascular system. But also you want to ensure that when you're exercising, do the exercise proper. Make sure that you do the exercise in the, with the proper form to avoid hurting your back or hurting your knee. Make sure that you don't put too much weight. Make sure you build up to, to don't just rush and go in and just start picking up everything. Build your way up to the weight that you want to get to. And when and you should have a, a, a if you don't have a trainer with you, at least have a friend with you. Because when you're picking up weights, make sure you have someone to spot you. Now, so Fitness exercise is extremely important. Like I said, you, you, you should at least have 60 minutes a day of Hello? 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 What I get, what I get. 
You must have 60 minutes of continuous movement daily. Now, you should stretch, make sure your body is, is uh, you should stretch daily. You should have aerobic exercise, meaning that you, you, you should exercise that cause you to breathe. You want to make sure that you're You want to make sure that you're breathing. Now, now, what are the differences between anaerobic exercises and anabolic exercises? Have you said anaerobic exercises? Are exercises that help to improve our cardiovascular system. Aerobic exercise or any type of cardiovascular condition or cardio. During cardiovascular condition, your breathing and heart rate increases for a sustained period of time. Some examples are swimming, swimming laps, running, or cycling. And also, when you're on the treadmill, that also helps to increase your, your cardiovascular. So if you can't run, then you, you can get on a treadmill. Now, the second type of exercise is anaerobic exercises. And anaerobic exercises involve quick bursts of energy and are performed at maximum effort for a short time. Some examples of anaerobic exercises are jumping, sprinting, or heavy weight lifting. So when you go to the gym, when you get your, um, Fit this program together to make sure that you have a good combination of aerobic exercises and anaerobic exercises. You should have both. Your, your respiration and your heart rate differ in aerobic activity versus anaerobic ones. Oxygen is your main energy source during aerobic workouts. During aerobic exercises, your breath, you breathe faster and you breathe deeper and your, than when your heart rate is at rest. So during an aerobic exercise, your heart rate is, your heart is moving. Your heart is, uh, you, you're maximizing the amount of oxygen in the blood. Your heart rate goes up. Your blood rate, in, uh, your blood flow increases to the muscles. And it increases to the back, to the lungs. So you need the aerobic exercises, and you need to um, that, that that helps your heart. Aerobic exercises help your heart. It helps your, your uh, breathing. If you're walking and you get out of breath after the first. 30 minutes, or uh, you, uh, you got a breath after a half a mile, then you need to increase your, uh, your, your uh, aerobic exercises. You need to increase your cardiovascular health, your cardiovascular condition. Now, so that's aerobic exercises. The second one that we, we uh, mentioned was anaerobic exercises. So anaerobic exercises, it requires immediate energy. Your body relies on stored energy sources rather than oxygen to fuel itself. So anaerobic exercises break down glucose. Now, as I said, you should always do some cardio, which is aerobic, and you should do some anaerobic, but the, but the exercise that you concentrate on the most, that depends on what your fitness goals are. So your fitness goals should help you determine whether you should participate more in aerobic or more in anaerobic exercises. But if you're new to exercise, you've you, you just started exercising, like to build up your endurance. 
concentrate on anaerobic exercise to build up your endurance. Because you're going to need endurance no matter what type of exercise. So build up your endurance. Which means to concentrate more on your aerobic exercise if you're just starting out. And then after you've worked out for a while and you lose weight quickly, then you add anaerobic workout, workout to your routine. Now, so that's, that's a look at what you need to concentrate on as far as fitness and exercise. Now, the third thing for optimal health is deep sleep and meditation. Deep sleep and meditation. We have said that you, put, that you should get eight hours of sleep daily, at least eight. So that eight hours of sleep need to be deep sleep. I mean, you need to get to a point where you're into what they call REM sleep. And a good way to do that is before you go to sleep, meditate. Try to, try to meditate before you go to sleep. That will help you get your body relaxed and you'll sleep better and you'll get to that point of REM sleep. So avoid caffeine at least eight hours, at least six to eight hours from the time you're going to sleep. So caffeine stays in the system six to eight hours. So if you're going to drink uh, any caffeine, coffee, where you get the caffeine from coffee, where you get it from green tea, where you get it from black tea, where you get your caffeine from from sodas, or you shouldn't eat, you shouldn't drink sodas. But no matter what your caffeine sources are, try to avoid ca caffeine at least 60, six to eight hours before you go to sleep. So, to summarize so far, make sure that your diet is good, right, healthy food. Make sure you get the proper supplements because you're not going to be, get, be able to get all of your essential nutrients just from food. So you need to have, you need to take supplements. Make sure you get at least 60 minutes of continuous movement daily. So you fit in the exercise, aerobic exercise, start off with aerobic, build your endurance up. And then once you get your endurance built up, then you move to anaerobic exercises. Third thing, we said eight hours of sleep daily. Try to get at least eight hours of sleep daily. Make sure that you won't get to a point where you're going to REM sleep. We're going to a deep sleep. Meditate before you go to bed. Calm yourself down a little bit and you'll be able to sleep better. Now the fourth thing, which is the last thing, this is not the least thing because this is just important. And that is a positive mental attitude. You cannot have optimal health physically or mentally if you have a negative mindset. If your mental mindset is wrong, that's going to affect every system. That's going to, have, that's going to affect your physical body. It's going to affect how you think, how you view the world, and it also will affect you spiritually. So you want to have a positive mind. Without a positive mind, you won't be able to re relax. So a positive mind and relaxation. That's the fourth and final thing that we're going to look at today. The Portland Hill said, um, actually it was said before the Portland Hill, so it's actually in the Bible, as a man thinks so is he. I think it, therefore I am. Your thinking comes from your, from your mindset. However you feel about yourself, that will affect everything around you. That will, that will affect the people that you come in contact with, everything. So a positive mind is the key, one of the keys to ha having optimal health. Optimal health needs to have, be physically healthy, mentally healthy, and spiritual health meaning that your soul is also healthy. So, that's all we have for you today. Like this video, 
subscribe to the channel, share the video, leave a comment. And if you like this video, check some of the other videos that we have. Check out some of the other videos that we have.